Counter-Strike Condition Zero was the sequel to the original Half-Life mod Counter-Strike. Originally developed by Ritual Entertainment, however, just before they could finish the game, Valve decided to hand the task of making a sequel to Counter-Strike over to Turtle Rock Studios. Instead of scrapping the work that had already been done by Ritual Entertainment, they decided to polish off what Ritual had already made and release it as a bonus game alongside Condition Zero, which they named Deleted Scenes. Deleted Scenes is very different from other Counter-Strikes you might know and love. It consists of a set of disconnected single-player linear levels where the player must shoot at NPCs in order to complete the missions. As a speed game, I would say it plays like a cross between Half-Life 1 and GoldenEye. And Recoil is the name of the first level in this game, and in this video we're going to be talk taking a look at the world record progression for the speedrun of this level. The earliest run on the leaderboards comes in 2017, when a player by the name of Master Z uploaded their run of Recoil. There are full game runs from earlier than this, but as I said, this video will be focusing on the first level. Master Z's video begins timing from the opening cutscene of the game, but was later retimed to start at the first frame where the player can move, which became the standard timing method from then on. This run gives us a chance to take a look at the general layout of recoil. First, Master Z runs away from the crash helicopter and into the nearby building, dodging enemies as he goes. He has to shoot some boxes in order to crawl through a small hole. Then he picks up the radio controlled bomb which is sitting on a convenient shelf, and takes it upstairs in the next room, where he will need to use it to blow up part of a wall in order to progress. The explosion of the radio controlled bomb will damage the player if you're nearby, but by standing right in the corner behind this small jutting out bit of wall, you won't take damage from the explosion, allowing you to move th uh, to be as close as possible to the newly created hole in the wall as soon as you are safe to move through it. Once through the wall, you make your way out into the chaotic courtyard with explosions and enemies everywhere as fast as possible, passing away any NPCs which stand in your way or can do significant damage to you, like the guy who controls a mounted gun. Collecting some health from the wall, Master Z goes up a flight of stairs shooting the NPC so he can move past, then runs out briefly onto a rooftop before entering a room where he meets a friendly NPC, the Delta Sniper. He has to wait until the Delta Sniper finishes his dialogue and walks over to, an o to open a door so you can progress. More hallways and bad guys ensue. In the meantime, Master Z walks up to the friendly NPC and presses E, which makes him stay still and wait. This is because if that guy dies, the mission fails and you lose. Master Z throws a grenade between a set of half open doors. This will blow up a wooden box on the other side, which will come in handy later, although unfortunately Master Z misses his grenade throw and does not destroy the boxes. He jumps up a set of boxes and continues through, the, uh, through another building, heading towards the landing site. At this point in the level, your objective is to clear the landing site of hostiles in order to make a safe space for the helicopter to land and pick you up. After reaching the landing site, Master Z proceeds to pass away as many NPCs as he can, as quickly as possible, and takes a fair bit of damage in the meantime, meaning that once he's done, he goes out of his way to pick up some health packs, ammo, and body armor to get him through the rest of the level. Once that's done, his new objective is to rescue the Delta Sniper who has been captured and is now being held as hostage on the other side of the map. To get there, he has to backtrack through the area he just came through, dealing with a new wave of enemy NPCs that have spawned there. There are some moments here where you can see Master Z having trouble hitting fast headshots due to Counter-Strike having significant movement inaccuracy on weapons. In a speedrun, this leads to a risk-reward play. Do you want to keep running past the enemies and risk missing your shots and losing time, or slow down in order to shoot more accurately? Reaching the Delta Sniper, he now has to complete the final objective, which is to escort the Delta Sniper back to the landing site to complete the level. This means once again going back through the same area, although this time you have to take the Delta Sniper with you. The Delta Sniper can't take the faster route of jumping on the boxes to reach the higher level, so this is where the set of wooden doors from before comes in. Because he missed the grenade shot, Master Z has to shoot through the wooden doors in order to destroy the boxes on the other side, blocking them from opening. Unfortunately, the Delta Sniper says the dreaded line, No way, I'm not going any further, meaning he will stop following Master Z, so he has to go back and press E on him again to get him to start following again. Finally, Master Z leads this Delta Sniper all the way through the building, coming to a set of stairs where once again the Delta Sniper refuses to follow. This set of snares, stairs seems to bug out the, his AI, and he will often get stuck at this spot for seemingly no reason at all. Once down the stairs, it's just a matter of reaching the helicopter which finishes the level. Timing ends when the next level starts loading. One thing you might be surprised by, given this game is made in the Gold Source engine, is the lack of bunny hopping. Unfortunately, in this game, every time you land on the ground, your velocity is reset to zero on the first frame, so even with perfect timing, bunny hops are impossible. 
Well, that's on the PC version. On Mac and Linux for some reason, Bunny Hop still works, but has a speed cap. Although I'm not sure when the rule was implemented, it was decided that Bunny Hop runs belong in a separate category, since most people play on PC and it would give an unfair advantage based on hardware differences. Master Z's run came down to a time of 5 minutes 25 seconds. However, in December of the same year, things would start to change. Specifically, on the 3rd of December 2017, a runner by the name of Trollzors1337 would take the time down by almost a minute, to a time of 4 minutes and 36 seconds. On the speedrun.com page for this run, it says that the run was actually performed the day before, on the 2nd of December, but it was submitted to the leaderboards on the 3rd. What strategies did Trollzors1337 employ in order to lower the record so much? Instantly off the bat, we can see a number of new movement techniques. These techniques were being developed by full game runners as far back as 2014, but seems to be the first time they were implemented for this particular IL run. The first thing you will almost certainly notice is that Trollzors constantly wiggles his mouse from left to right as he goes. What's going on here? Well, let's listen to Trollzors themselves explain it. Although you can't bunny hop in this game, there are other methods of movement to get around faster. One of them is this, I guess you could call it wiggle strafing. Basically it's like bunny hopping, but you just don't jump. You hold forward, and then turn right and hold D, and then left and hold A, and you keep doing this, and you can gain speed. As well as wiggle strafing, the other main method Trollzors uses to increase his movement speed is wall strafing. If you strafe against a wall as you run, as in run along touching a wall and holding the direction that would move you towards the wall as well as W, plus angle your mouse just slightly pointing towards the wall, this also makes the, you run a little bit faster. The final piece of the puzzle that is movement speed in this game is that just like other Counter-Strike games, you run faster with knife. Run faster with a knife! Everyone runs faster with a knife! Or a pistol or other equipment like radio controlled bomb. Other than trying to wiggle or wall strafe as much as possible, Trollzor's run looks very similar to Master Z's. Here we can see him practicing his KZ long jumps as he waits for the Delta Sniper to finish talking and walk over to the door. There are some minor root differences from this point, with Master Z choosing to open and go through the wooden door, double doors straight away instead of taking the jumping over boxes route. He also takes a slightly longer route through the building before reaching the landing site to pick up some more health and ammo. At the landing zone, Trollzors knows exactly which NPCs need to be passed away by him and which ones would be killed by bombs that drop on the area automatically making this section much faster and more efficient. Since he knows that all the other NPCs will be taken care of by the explosions, he starts running back towards the Delta Sniper before the objective is a time to complete, meaning that no new enemies have spawned in the previous area yet. You can see that when the objective completes, an enemy comedically spawns in the air right in front of him. Once he reaches the Delta Sniper, we can see him discover a new strat in real time. Just watch. Next time we're out on the <gasps> Wait, you can. Okay. Oh, can you literal Goldeneye? He moved before he was supposed to. Trollzors mentions Goldeneye because this strategy is somewhat similar to some NPC manipulation in the Goldeneye speed one, where you dance back and forth in order to lure an NPC to come closer to you. Here, the strat we just saw being discovered is actually more like just nudging the NPC from behind, but it can be used to move the Delta Sniper slightly forward during his line of dialogue, which saves a tiny bit of time. If that wasn't already enough to make this run notable, after leading the Delta Sniper into the courtyard, another funny moment occurs when Trollzors is surprised by ghost versions of some NPCs and a clone of the Delta Sniper standing still frozen out in the open. No way. I'm not going any what is even happening? I don't know what that is. They're stuck there from a scripted sequence where they originally captured the Delta Sniper, but speedrunners don't see that because they're going so fast. Sometimes, seemingly at random, ghost versions of the NPCs from this scripted sequence just decide not to despawn. They don't affect the run in any way, but it is strange to see a clone of the guy you're supposed to be rescuing just standing around hanging out with the enemy. After all of this, Trollzor's wall strafes and wiggles to the end of the level, passing by yet more NPCs that appear to be frozen, and finally reaching what? the helicopter. Even despite the strange occurrences here, Trollzor's ended up with a pretty good time, mostly due to wiggling and wall strafing, a much faster strat at the landing site, and generally better shooting and movement. However, this wouldn't last as on the same day this run was submitted to the leaderboards, another runner would take the time below 4 minutes. This runner's name was Fusaha. Fusaha's run would introduce three new strategies. 
The first strategy takes place in the chaotic courtyard. Rather than running all the way around the whole place, Fusaha jumps onto a conveniently placed box next to this wall, then jumps onto an NPC's head, which gives him just enough height to jump up onto the wall and drop down on the other side, skipping the need to run all the way around. Once on the other side, you can't run directly into the doorway, as in order for that door to open you need to hit a trigger in front of the NPC with the mounted gun, so Fusaha runs straight to the trigger that opens the door, then straight into the doorway. The second strategy is, as Fusaha puts it, random and a pain to do. It involves the sequence where we have to wait for the Delta Sniper to finish talking and walk over to a door to open it to allow us to pass. It's an extremely finicky and random technique, and probably the major bottleneck and cause of resets on this level. On the roof before entering this room there is one enemy wielding a machete. In order to execute this skip, the NPC must be spared while you pass away all the others. Then, once you open the door to the room with the Delta Sniper, he will see the machete wielding man and get spooked. You must then precisely block the Delta Sniper from running forwards, and stab him with your own knife in order to spook him, cause him to run to the back of the room where the door is. All of this has to be done with precise timing as quickly as possible after entering the room. If the Delta Sniper has time to start his dialogue then he won't move in the right way. You then have to hope that the machete wielding NPC decides to attack the Delta Sniper and not you, and he might push the Delta Sniper just close enough to the door that he opens it, but not do too much damage because if the Delta Sniper dies you fail the level. This skip is dependent on the random actions of two NPCs, as well as precise timing and movement from the player. The machete wielding NPC has to be in the correct location to spook the Delta Sniper at the right time in the right way and that's well just random as far as I can see. Sometimes you'll block the Delta Sniper and he just won't move in the right way, meaning he doesn't open the door. This trick if done right can save up to 25 seconds which is a pretty huge time save. The third new strategy takes place when you clear the landing site. It's a consistent way to pass away the correct enemies very quickly. First, shooting the nearest NPC on the ground in the back and the sniper on the archway, then lining up a, a grenade to land in the gap between two wooden crates, which will take out or lower the health of the other NPCs that, would norm that wouldn't normally die from the dropping bombs so that they will not survive the other explosions. While rescuing the Delta Sniper, Fusaha goes for the nudging strap but unfortunately doesn't get it, then escorts the Delta Sniper to the helicopter, making sure to look him in the eyes as much as possible which for some reason makes the NPCs follow you better in this game. At the end of the run, Fusaha got a time of 3 minutes 54 seconds using all these new strategies, to beat the previous record by 42 seconds just one day after it had been performed. This record would stand until 2019, mostly due to the game having a very small player base and not having much competition in the IL categories. However, on the 5th of February 2019, a runner named Esno would lower the time in this submission to the level leaderboard. Most of the time saved by Esno comes from optimizations and fewer mistakes, more accurate shooting and completing the escort section with better control slash luck from the Delta Sniper. But there was one impressive new strat implemented here, which is a grenade boost in order to ascend to the balcony in the courtyard faster. In this game, if you time a grenade to explode just as you jump and crouch in midair, the explosion blast will send you flying. You can then use air strafing to control your movement and land where you want. The big downside here is that it massively increases the challenge of health management. You have to be much more conscious of your health coming up to the grenade boost to make sure you don't just blow yourself up, and then after the grenade boost you'll be low on health meaning enemies pose a significant risk of passing you away if you're not quick and careful when dealing with them. Esno was sitting on just 10 health and 13 armor here, but then takes a body shot from an assault rifle taking him down to just 7 HP, and then one more meaning he reached a low of just 3 health, before picking up a health pack. Interestingly, although Esno makes heavy use of wall strafing, they do not make use of wiggle strafing at all. Esno ended up taking the time down to 3 minutes 28 seconds. Not to be outdone, a few months later in March of 2019, Fusaha would reclaim his world record by just one second with a time of 3.27. At this point, there was finally legitimate competition on the IL leaderboards for this stage, and the level was starting to get somewhat optimised. Fusaha doesn't get the RNG for the door skip with the Delta Sniper first time, so he reloads a quick save and gets his second try. This is perfectly allowed within the rules of the speedrun. He makes the time back by going for a slightly riskier strat after the grenade boost, not going for the earlier health pack at the landing zone and instead remaining on 6 HP until he can pick up a later health pack which is less far off the route. Other than that, the rest of his second saved was with better weapon choice and movement, since Fusaha does make heavy use of wiggle strafing. 
Weapon choice is actually quite important and offers another spot for runners to play with their own style and think on the fly. Some weapons are more powerful than others, saving time by passing away enemies faster, however they also have slower movement speed, plus each gun has limited ammo so you have to balance these three aspects in order to try and be as efficient as possible. After this we have to wait until 2021 for further news. A runner by the name of Fruick would lower the record down to 326 and continue optimizing the run shaving off seconds over the coming months. There's not really any new strat development here apart from a very minor time save at the landing zone where Fruick kills one extra NPC than the previous strat. In fact in the next months he would get a super lucky fast landing zone clear along with fewer mistakes that would end up saving around 3 seconds bringing the record down to a 322. Fruick kept optimizing his runs and lowering his own time not due to any new flashy strats, but simply due to his dedication to grind the game more than anyone else, lowering his own record from 322 to 318, 316, and finally the current world record set by Fruick in April of 2021, an insane 314. Even in a very small speed game like Counter Strike Condition Zero deleted scenes, Fruick was motivated to grind down his own world record despite facing literally zero competition, just for the sake of being the best he could be. Remember when I said that bunny hopping doesn't work on PC? Well, a new update to Bunny Mod XT, the mod that Half-Life 1 runners used to remove the bunny hop speed cap in that game, allowed it to work with deleted scenes, breathing new life into the B-hop category. Fruick also proceeded to quickly lower the B-hop record to a 258, and then down to a 257 a few months later, where it again still stands. Fruick also holds the world records for the full game runs in both B-Hop and non-B-Hop categories, where he's ahead of second place by 3 minutes on each. So it seems Fruick is the king of this game as of now. The question is, does anybody else have the dedication to run this, let's admit it, obscure and mediocre game, in order to dethrone him? Personally, I found it to be a fairly rewarding and complex speed game, although I haven't dedicated the time required to grind for world records. Maybe you have what it takes. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash no thank you. The O's are zeros. It's in the description. I know this video doesn't deserve money, but uh, you know, gotta shout out my Patreon whenever possible. I'm thinking of starting to grind this game. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a thing. The game's fun, I promise. The game is very fun to speedrun. It's not that fun to play casually, but it is fun to speedrun. Uh, um, especially with bunny hops, it's, it's very fun. Um, but, uh, it, you know, I'm, I don't have the dedication that, that, that some people have. Speed. I don't have speedrunner type dedication. Uh, as much as I like speedrunning as a hobby, I don't have the dedication to actually grind for world records. Anyway, now I'm rambling. This is supposed to just be a quick thanks for watching the video. It just says in the script, say thanks for watching the video. Uh, so thanks for watching the video. <laughs> uh, subscribe. I don't make these sorts of videos often, but uh, or ever. But, uh, you know, subscribe anyway. If you like, I don't know, whatever the fuck I do.